Joining me now with more on the possibility of a U.S. government shutdown and why Republicans in Congress are still fighting President Obama's health care flaw, Atiba Madian. He's uh, founder of Madian Group, a government relations consulting firm. And, and let's kind of get at the heart of this, for, just for our international audience. Um, it, it, this effort may actually trigger a government shutdown in many respects. Can you kind of walk us through where we're at? And again, we've mentioned that this has been 40 times, and there, it seems like some lawmakers are bent on trying to stop this from actually going through. Yeah, it's, it's I want to say crazy. Um, and I say crazy from the standpoint of we're spending a lot of time uh, killing jobs. Um, in terms of the focus right now being on Obamacare, on, on health care insurance, or for something that's going to help every single American, or for something that will help people with their children be able to stay, so that they can stay on their health insurance until they're 26 years of age. It will be so that women who won't be considered a pre-existing condition and denied care or have to pay for um, uh, routine exams like a mammogram. Or the fact that insurance companies can't spend X amount of money, uh, uh, a certain amount of money more than they use um, those, that same money to pay for health care insurance. Um, it's 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 kind of crazy that we have this kind of conversation going on and a debt ceiling conversation, and this is being used to, to um, that something that will affect the American people. The interesting thing is, uh, just from an international perspective, you know, we look at Britain, we look at Canada. It seems like people in these countries they're not saying, "Please take this away from me." I have friends in Australia who say to me, "What's with your country? I mean, we've got great health care here. We're really happy with it." Why are so many people against it in the United States? And how would you answer that if they were to ask you that question? It almost seems as if there's some that want to have something and they want to see that others don't have it. That's the best way that I can explain this. We're talking about health insurance plans in the states and we're seeing premiums go down across the country. And when you talk about a health care premium that may cost less than it costs for many of us to have a cell phone, it doesn't seem to be a, a real valid argument to say we're, we don't want to have this. You mentioned the 26-year-olds, and there are a lot of young people leaving college, can't find jobs, and suddenly they've got to find insurance, and now all of a sudden these parents have this opportunity, and I've talked to a lot of them who are very excited about it. Do you think part of the problem is that this has been kind of drip, 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 piecemeal? If the whole thing went through all at once, maybe people would see it and say, hey, this isn't such a bad thing, or is, is that part of the problem, you think? I'm going to applaud the administration, and then I'm going to criticize it at the same time. I'm going to applaud the administration for getting this done. There have been pres every president since President Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, has tried to get universal health care through. But President Obama was not only able to get it through, it also was upheld in the Supreme Court. But the problem here is the message. The message has not been diluted enough so that everyday American people can understand how this is going to positively be good for them and their families. Instead, the Republicans have done a very good job of painting a picture that this is something that they should be against. There are some polling data out there. I'm just going to look at one of them. CNN poll says 39% of the respondents favor most or all of uh, Obamacare. Um, Pew says about 42 percent, but 53 percent uh, expressing disapproval. But Pew went one step further and asked the people who disapproved, what do you want done? Do you want it to go away, or do you think they should tinker with it and make it better? And a lot of them said, we want lawmakers to tinker with it and make it better. That doesn't seem like a message that's getting through to a lot of these Republican lawmakers, though. I think part of the concern, too, is that when the Supreme Court ruled on this, it said that it was a tax. So I think that that, that part has probably put fear in Americans, and rightfully so. So we have to figure out a way that we message this in a way so that people understand that, yes, it is a tax, but we're talking about health insurance. We're talking about the fact that if you have a car, you have to have um, car insurance. If you get sick and you do not have health insurance, many people go bankrupt because they can't pay for that health care insurance. This law is in place to keep the average American family from going bankrupt. Now, talk to me a little bit about PR, though, because it seems to me that uh, the administration probably hasn't done that great a job in terms of PR, and they're up against some forces that are pretty good with PR machines, aren't they? Well, if we remember back in the 90s when President Clinton and, uh, Hillary, and First Lady Hillary Clinton tried to get health care through, and then we saw a lot of commercials from the insurance side that uh, was in opposition to uh, what was then called Hillary Care. So today, the insurance companies, I would believe, cannot do the same thing as they did back in the 90s. But there, have been, there are others that are out front that are championing and talking about this in a way to try to fight it. Atiba, thank you for coming in. You